Hello everyone and welcome back to Control. This is episode 3 of the AWE DLC. Last time we took on Hartman in the Eagle Limited AWE and we're now following him into uh, Fra Mauro AWE. So we're going to see what's going on in there, probably do something similar that we did last time uh, and then I assume at the end of this wild, uh, wild Hartman chase we will end up taking him on in the Bright Falls AWE, which I'm very excited to get into. So let's take our, let's take our elevator uh, and see where we end up. All right, one way down. Hey, you're back. So anyway, still, I don't know why people are making it so personal. And Langston is I mean, back. The teams in research handle paranatural materials every day and no one thinks they're weird. Well, maybe that's not true. Darling is famous for being a bit out there. We've already heard this. He's weird, it's charming. Altered items really aren't that frightening once you get So he continues on this part of the like like, of the dialogue when we go into another off, lift. But we've already listened to his entire spiel, so we day, don't have any need to stick around with him. <laughs> We're supposed to be on the same team, but sometimes it feels like it's every department for themselves, like it's a race and we're all trying to be number. God, I love that ability. I love just being able to throw them at them. Just be like, here, you lost your friend. I'm gonna send him back to you. <laughs> nice. Surprised that that one didn't do damage to me. So, yeah, we... Last episode we sat and let Langston give out his whole entire spiel. So he's already said all of that stuff. Um... Means we don't have to worry about standing around him anymore. Okay. Let us proceed. I'll keep this keep this light on us in case we need it. I think there's a job for Artie that's also supposed to be done in this area as well. I think it might be cleansing the darkness still, so we'll keep an eye out for that. I think it might be... Nope, that's just holding a power cable. Power core, not a cable. Uh, I've been sleeping on this grenade launcher, let me tell you. Like, the fact that it just absorbs, like, around the impact radius... It's, it's basically just the, the shoot to win weapon, for sure. I like it. <laughs> Arcade cabinets procedures, the, the shum games, interesting. So we got a document to read on those arcade cabinets. Don't know where we need to put this, but we'll have a look around. Probably right here. It's covered in darkness. Okay, give me that. Um, where did we throw the key? Always with the cardboard boxes. There you go. Wonderful. Let there be light. Or power to the elevator. One of those. I guess we'll be fighting Hartman out there. Seems like it. Um... Let me get some, let me get a light source just in case there's not one down here. Oh. You. Thank you. Damn it. Oh. It, the, okay. Interesting. We gotta find another light source. Light source that's on a tram car. Okay, interesting. 
So you've got to power the tram car, but then I also need to power this as well. Okay, interesting. So it's not as simple as just being able to bring a light source in from up above because we need to make the whole tram car thing work. So... <laughs> I'm aiming at the, at the power core. Alright, so we've got to do this. Now we have a light source. Can I aim... Hmm, I don't think we can aim it, we have to move it. Interesting, so I have to actually take it and put it on this one. So I can then do this. Cool, I can stop it. Oh, that is... Like, I get what they're going for, like, yeah? But at the same time, this is so finicky to control. Like, I get it, but at the same time, like... <laughs> Alright, that's aiming right at that source. Cool. That should burn that light away. It does. Good. Cool. So we get the general gist of it. We need to move it to get it to burn this stuff away, and that will allow me to get to lower access. At least we don't have to do much in this in this room. <laughs> At least we don't have to do much. If, it was a f if there's a full-on segment related to needing to do this, I, I don't know how much I would love it. Right, we'll bring it all the way over. It's just like one of those things that's designed only to work in very specific circumstances. <laughs> Don't want that bin. Don't want that box. <laughs> Power core. Priority, please. Oh. And it's just not there. Hold on. Power core, please. Thank you. Lovely. To the lower access we go. Sometimes there can be creative ways to, like, defeat the darkness and proceed, and it's like, oh, that's cool. And then there are times like that, <laughs> and you're like, all right then. Escape the darkened corridor. Okay. So I'm assuming Hartman's in here. Nice. They made this this uh, this wall very obvious to destroy. Very clearly telegraphed. It's too dark in here to fight this thing. enough to avoid, just gotta dash. Oh, there he is. <laughs> so creepy though. Where do I have to take this? Interesting. Oh. Can I take it through the wall? Interesting that that didn't blow the wall up. So we've pushed him back into the actual AWE area, I guess. Claim that control point. Where are we? Okay, so we've got turntable, takes us through to a room, and then... Alright. Yeah, that, that weapon. Especially with a blast radius increase, my god. Just very, very pleased with that one. 
been using like grip and shatter for so long that this one feels very good. Can I rip that light off? I feel like Jesse would normally should have the ability to just rip that light off, but then probably in doing so would also disconnect the power supply and therefore the light would no longer work, so that makes sense. <laughs> I need a light to take care of the darkness down below. Okay, we're gonna try this one more. F R A interrogation. Okay, we're gonna try this one more time and then we're done playing with you. Understand, Jelly? Where are Jelly. you? Jelly from? Jumbo Grand. Up and loose and heavy treat sandwich. Jesus Christ! Does anyone have any idea what this thing is saying? Hotly. Dirt arrange you. Why are you here? What the hell do you want? Why'd you stow away on that ship? School bearing boy boy. Eyes many cauterizing loops through and about. Wind and windy Mitchell. Did he just say Mitchell? Was there a Mitchell at NASA? Tubes. You know what? Never mind. I can't do this anymore. Just send this thing to the guys in research. Let them cut it up or whatever they do. You hear that? They're gonna cut you up, you pain in the ass. Spider time. <laughs> Oh, resisting the urge to just only speak in absolute nonsense from now on. Just heavily resisting. Do you know how hard it would be to fake that, though? Like, I would... He's so confidently speaking nonsense that it would just be so hard to just be like... To construct a sentence that sounds like a sentence but constructed out of words that just don't go together. That's, that's a beautiful thing. <laughs> The Shum Arcade Cabinets, a distance of 10 feet between the items, suppresses their effect. Effect only triggers on physical contact. Items are a pair of arcade game cabinets originally designed for the games Shum and Shum 2, Kolgar's Revenge. The games were manufactured by Bonko Entertainment, now out of business. Despite being a popular arcade game in Japan during the late 80s, early 90s, no other Shum cabinets have been found by our investigators. When touching one of the items while it stands within 10 feet of its counterpart, the user's mind is transported to a version of their subjective reality that resembles a video game in logic and function. Events from their everyday lives become game-like sequences in which speed and efficacy are paramount. The brain enters a stroke-like state, wow, as proven by EEG studies on users, which only ends after the user finishes their game, at which point they resume both normal and motor function. Normal brain and motor function. Crazy. Jelly. Where? Jelly. Jumbo brain. Up and loose and heavy treat sandwich. Jesus Christ. Does anyone have any idea what this thing is? <laughs> Hotly. Dirt arrange you. Oh my god, dude. What the hell do you I wonder, That might be one of my favorite audio files so far. Where's the, where's the sphere? There you are. Appreciate that. going in there. Hang on, which way are we facing? We're going this way. Oh. When we can actually get in there, that is. Yes, the grenade works well on the levitating ones too, when you actually hit it nearby them. I'm a fan of that.
Oh. Nice. The light here opened that up. Clever. Oh, Jesus. I didn't even know there was another one in here with me, let alone a, a sniper one. God, that was a surprise. Okay, I'm just gonna miss every one of my throws. God damn. Okay, so we've got bridge operator. I guess we gotta go in here to keep the bridge moving. Shifted officers. Is there anything else in here besides the light? I don't think so. <laughs> Hello, trench. I uh, got a floating enemy. Just chilling. Oh! Oh, fuck! Looks like whatever force had a hold on Hartman isn't mixing well with the his corruption. Blake did call him the third thing. So it looks like his rib cage has spun around and split out of his back. He still retains his actual face. It looks like a human face. Uh, it had been obscured for me before this point. I wasn't able to see it, but that looks like, yeah, just an inverted... Uh, rib cage. Okay. I'm just going to free. Okay. I'm just going to freestyle a bit. <clears throat> My mother always said, never talk to strangers. Always. Never. Never. Always. always. Never. But isn't a stranger just someone you don't know? What if the only thing stopping a stranger from being a friend is that word? Stranger. Strange. Err. Strange like the noises you hear at night when there is no light and you cannot fight we, we finally like got some rhymes there we go that follows you around and makes you drop your coffee every time that it quacks because the noise scares you then you have to clean up the coffee while the duck stares at you and continues to quack Quack. 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 Thank you, Langston. You've got such good flow. Such good flow. Just a really good understanding of lyrical genius. Yep. That's, yeah. A chain letter. <laughs> I remember these. Mom used to say they were evil. Hmm. Better do what it says. Return you know, to sender. Just in case. There must be a photocopier around here. Hmm. There's a control point here, so before we backtrack, we'll unlock this so we can go back and do return to sender. We'll find a copy machine. Interesting. Um. We can upgrade Surge, so let's do that. 
Ooh, we can buy some level 6 mods. Shaded Facet. What else needs? Uh, we need Shaded Facet to upgrade Surge as well. Yeah. That's fine. Uh, abstract a random weapon mod and a personal mod. Sorry. Uh, an infinite. Let's do one of those. Energy gain from headshots. Cool. Shield strength, 88%. Yeah, it's okay. It's alright. Not my first choice, though. Um, let's get one of these. Launch energy cost minus 22. Health recovery on launch hits is actually not bad, but also it's only 19%. I really thought like the the tier 6 mods would be just like genuinely like top of the line stuff, but it's not the best to be honest with you. It's not the best. I'm going to save up my shaded uh um, shaded facets now for upgrading surge. Uh, we're going to go back to the operations center. Active investigations. So find a photocopier for this mission. Return to sender. All right. And also I might double check my loadout. So we have health recovery per element pickup 54% just health ammo recovery on evade usage I might change that and we can do health recovered on launch hits I like that I'm gonna ditch the all the level 4 mods at this point now I don't see a reason to go back down to level 4 personal mods and then weapon mods. Let's see what we've got. Ground slam damage after weapon hits. Energy gain from headshots. I might actually do that for this. So ammo cost while levitating, rate of fire, damage after kills. So we're gonna do get rid of the ammo cost to do energy gain from headshots. Seems good to me. Wonderful. Alright, we're in active investigations. <laughs> Let's just turn around. Party's janitor board. Oh, and we have company. Pretty sure we already got that right. Of the darkness is <laughs> you took that vending machine with you. It had like a life of its own just then. Shaded facet. Oh no, hang on. What the fuck? It's an actual enemy. Wait a minute. What the fuck? Uh, just gave me so many items. I was like, I thought that that had just like glitched down the hallway when I threw it. But no, it was an actual thing. Whoa, hello materials. I'm just here for a fucking copy machine. Okay. Their uncanny ability to affect reality through their art. Back into the darkness, or did there perhaps Filing and processing seems like it would be in there, but also the learning the answer objective is in this room. Assuming he cooperates, which is proving quite the challenge. 
Oh, it's right here. This certainly feels familiar. Yeah. Just like when we were at the fucking trapped in limbo. Mail three copies of the chain letter. Okay. We're running around. Doing jobs. Alright, let's go mail some letters. Uh, what's that one over the left hand side? Turntable. So we can get to the utility corridor. Okay, let's have a look. There, hold on. Forgot about that. <laughs> Through the door. Okay, there we go. So, are we just looking for one of those uh, mail tube things? A bit dark in here, so can't really can't really see, but. There we go. That's one cent. Alright then. Um, there's a light source. Probably should have taken that one with me, but I forgot that it was going to be so dark. Going next, uh, observation deck. Transit terminal. Okay, so we go to the observation deck. Hmm, <laughs> I can't. Hang on. Staircase, please. Ooh. How do I get to you? Okay. There's a way to get those elevator doors open. Oh. Or I just do this. Okay. Two down, one to go. Actually, it might just be better just to run to... This control point, and then we'll go to our third. Get out of the way. Third point uh, abandoned offices. Last one. Oh, yes. This is new. Uh, it can be any one of these. And that's three. That should take care of any bad karma. Whatever. But how did that first letter get in here? I wonder if I can track it to the source. Oh. 
the fuck? Out of here. Okay, <laughs> let's return to the shifted offices and see what all that fuss is about. Yeah, I've already been in here. Cool. Um. Shifted officers. There we go. AWE loading bay. Right. Hmm. I guess I should just follow the tube. Oh. So you're the one sending out spam mail. I want you to hide a mailbox. That takes care of that. No more superstitious blackmail. Interesting. Shaded Hartman, which we got before. And then the chain letter. There we go. Alright, chain letter. Oh no! This spooky man letter has found you! The spooky man curse is coming to you. To miss the curse, you must tag ten friends or they will creep in your room at night. To miss this curse, you must mail this letter to people. If you don't, the curse will get you. The more letters you mail, the better off you will be. Sally in Houston did not send the letter, and the spooky man ate her cat. Terence in Greenstone did not send the letter, and the spooky man gave him acne. Kyle did not send the letter, and now his wife eats dinner alone. Linda did send more letters. 30 letters in total so far, and look at her now. She owns three cars. She has all her fingers. She speaks Italian. You need to mail this letter. You better mail this letter. Don't let the spooky man come. He'll take your cat. Go find your stamps. Hurry. It really kills me how chain mail, uh, people fall for chain mail so easily and it's even spread recently to uh, certain social media apps in just an entirely new form where people just like fall for it so easily and people just comment on this being like this is literally like the 2020s era of chain mail on social media and all of you still fucking fall for it. <laughs> It's like, I, I, I'm not going to risk it, just in case. What the fuck are you talking about, dude? Like, seriously. Um, I don't get it. Uh, I need to get this Shaded Hartman note, because it comes out of the unread section. Dr. Emil Hartman, Shaded. Dr. Hartman is the first Type 2 shaded individual to be examined alive by the Bureau and has proven a valuable asset for our understanding of A-010, aka the Shadow. Like all shaded individuals, the specimen is constantly shielded by, or produces, a blank of darkness that makes visual observation difficult. This blank also protects the specimen from harm. During testing, Non-lethal ballistics proved ineffective against it. The specimen uses words and phrases that seems to originate from its previous life as a therapist. Some phrases have even been identified as quotes from Dr. Hartman's book, The Creator's Dilemma. This seems to indicate the host's personality remains blank to some degree. For research purposes, Shaded Hartman was relocated to the Cauldron Lake Lodge replica built for the blank AWE investigation. Researchers hope a familiar setting may trigger new behavior. The experiment has yielded no results thus far. So, the uh, the replica, it, the, the Bright Falls AWE is a Cauldron Lake Lodge replica. There we go. We have our we have our answer. Um, let's push in. So we've cleansed our little mailbox. This is Director Faded. I require backup at this location. Dude! You can grab your own grenades! 
you can grab your own grenades. That's fucking cool. You just have to get like, the, you just have to have the timing be almost immaculate. And I know that they're mine because when I throw them, it does the whole implosion effect. You're covered. I want to get it again, but how? It's like I can't force it. I just need to be really lucky. if you're maybe just not around anything. There you go, see this. You can grab it. It's just incredibly difficult to do so. Oh my god. That was such a cool revelation of being like, dude, I, you can throw your own fucking bombs. It's, just, it's very, very conditional. Together. You say that, but you can't follow me down the pipe, so you, we're not really in this together at all. You're only with me for this area, and now I'm gone. See you later. Loading bay vents. You just fucking teleported next to me. I saw that. These deployed rangers, man, they got abilities beyond my own comprehension. Like, who the fuck? Who the fuck did. What? You know? What? Excuse me? Excuse me, man? But then he doesn't come with me. It makes me feel like he wasn't even supposed to. I feel like he wasn't supposed to be able to even get to me. He just kind of just appeared. Oh. oh, I need to cleanse the mold down here. This is what I was talking about with Artie's room. Where? No AC, no mold spore circulation. Nice. But it might get a bit stuffy in here. Perfect. Alright, there's the mold completed for Artie. You still need to do the darkness and the plants. Darkness lift. Oh, wow. It's like a, it's like a moon lander, right? Look at him standing in front of it. Huh. I knew you'd be in here. Oh shit.
I need to get light onto. <laughs> I need to get light onto the power thing. Oh fuck! Oh, and you picked me up, and I'm dead because I, I don't have enough health for this. Yeah, I'm dead. I when when you get grabbed, it's just like it's over. Such a bullshit ability too. <laughs> He's just like, yeah, I'm gonna grab you, and we're gonna drain all your health now, and you can't break free. Um, fuck you. That's it. Fuck you for even bothering to be out in the darkness. <laughs> um, we need power cores. Let's try this mobile lab. Oh, that might be a good idea. The one that's literally right. The very first one might be a good idea. There you go. All right, there's our. Altered World Events Summaries that we can read. Oh good, that's burning that. There's our first one. Stop! I'm pretty sure I'm support- Oh, it's because I'm in the darkness, right. Ah, oh, shit. I forgot that, like, energy does not replenish while I'm in the darkness. fucking power core out. Why? I can't pull the power core out? What? Why can't I... Why couldn't I pull the power cord out? I'm in literally taking him up in the elevator with me. <laughs> uh, I think I might have to restart because I think I accidentally took the power core out of the other one too early. Now I'm just fucking randomly up here. In the darkness. I think I fucked it. I cannot see. So putting the power cores on the back uh, prevents them from... The power cores on the back prevents them from being ejected. There's another power core that's blocked in the darkness, so I think I need both of those and then to throw them in the back, but I haven't even gotten the... broken the one out of the darkness yet. Alright, let's do that again. Apartment 2 OP. So if you turn this on... Ah, uh, okay, it takes a light over the thing. Okay. Makes sense. Oh, wait. Okay, the light's not going over there. Where's the power... What? Where's the... Where's the power core? What the fuck? Oh, it's still in there. Oh, but I can still activate this? Hmm, okay. That makes sense. So putting that thing in there is actually fine. Because it still works for some reason. There you go. And now I have to do it again. To make it do that. Okay. Not very clearly <laughs> communicated, so that's my bad. I thought that I'd fucked up by pulling that out like too early before I'd have the chance to burn away this power core. Pick up the power core, not the fucking... Pick up the power core, man! Like, not the fucking trolley next to it. So silly. Alright, those two power cores are now in. <laughs> up the lift I go. It needs to be like targeting priority. Like if you're close to an important item, it should focus on that instead of picking up like a random trash can. There. One last place for him to hide. Gerbil took the top head. What? 
Okay, we've got another mission to do. Service ducks. Aha! Uh -huh. It's time for us to return to Bright Falls. Time for us to go back. Um, I want to go down here real quick, because now that we can explore this, I want to check out the thing in the middle, and then we'll read the documents that we got about this thing as well. Can we open these holding cells now? Excuse me? Worry who? See the sea. Oh, it's the guy. Hang on, is this the is this the mission that, that we just popped up then? Speak with the voice on the cell intercom, yep. <laughs> hello? Hello! Great about us today. He actually said hello. No, hardly. You are Bygon? Uh sure. Why are you locked up in here? Ah, uh, casual turning. Back in front. And <laughs> Gerbil took the top head. Not being pressed without. Lady going and loosing back for I? Sorry, I I think I'm misunderstanding you. What do you want? The head? The head for tales? For reading news, jars, words, and tumble. The reading head. Okay, okay. Take it easy. I'll uh I'll take a look. A gerbil Maybe it wants something to read. A gerbil has taken or a something. Jar. Like, Let's just see what we can find. A gerbil has taken his, like, ability to... Add an... Okay, we're looking for something in here. Yes, okay. <sighs> Let me in. <laughs> uh, let's read the notes. Let's read the case files. Let's have a look. The summary and the supplement. A paranatural entity arrived on Earth by infiltrating the Apollo 14 lunar mission at an unknown point of their voyage to the Frau Muro Highlands of the Moon. Ah, oh, so it's a, it a moon location. That's the name of that. Okay. 32 hours after the return of the Apollo 14 command module to Earth, the Bureau was contacted by Mr. Blank, a White House senior official, and instructed to send a small team to the Johnson Space Center in Houston. At the base, the team examined the entity and carried out interviews with NASA staff. They learned that four astronauts had returned to Earth instead of the expected three. Each human crew, crew member was insistent that the mission left with four members, though they couldn't name the fourth when asked. Hmm. The entity seemingly affected their memory to make its presence feel unremarkable. The entity was transported to the oldest house for further investigation. An altercation between NASA security and the investigation team occurred upon their arrival. Mr. Blank called to clarify the matter, though tensions remained high. Bureau jurisdiction and clearance should be defined more clearly with other federal agencies. Okay, we got the supplement. The Apollo 14 entity, commonly known as FRA, underwent a series of physical examinations upon its admittance into the oldest house. The entity can speak, though it's... Oh... He is... This prisoner is the entity from the moon. Ah. So he, it's not like he's been, like, altered to no longer be able to speak clearly. This is just its existence. The Apollo 14 entity, commonly known as Fra, underwent a series of physical examinations upon its admittance into the oldest house. The entity can speak, though its poor grasp of the English language makes any meaningful communication impossible. Interview material can be found at blank. Its physical form consists solely consists solely of the extravehicular mobile mobility unit, the EMU spacesuit used by NASA astronauts, the same model worn by the other crew. This could be an authentic EMU taken from one of the NASA, uh, NASA astronauts, uh, although the suit does not bear any wearer's name or one materialized through blank conversion or possibly blank corporealization. The suit itself is slightly damaged, which is likely due to the fact that the command module did not have a fourth seat for the entity to strap into during re-entry. The EMU is entirely hollow and pieces can be removed, though this seems to agitate the entity. X-rays and spectrograph imaging have shown blank-shaped outlines existing within the suit. For safety reasons, the entity will be contained in a secure cell until more information can be gathered. So it's a hollow suit, however, uh, however, something shaped outline exists within the suit. That's very interesting. That's bizarre. Uh, okay, so we need to find something. They got another holding cell and we got some other labs. I can't open that. 
Let's check this other lab out over here. Oh no. I'm just lost. We've been over there. Never mind. Uh, hold on. That is the holding cell. I thought it was over the other side. I'm just getting lost. Um, cannot interact with that. this area until we find something that's highlighted and then we go yes sir did you want this forklift did you want this forklift that I found oh hang on oh there we go this could be what it wants do you Let's want that do you want the squishy giraffe sir no no jars ahead Scotch and peppers Okay, that wasn't right. Let's try something else. Okay. Let's go into the other lab. See what's in here. A bowl or... Food. Maybe it'll like this. We got two options in here. Oh yeah, okay. Head. A S B E. Head. Nope. Let's keep trying. <laughs> Head. A S B E. Ball. Maybe this will do the trick. Ball. Oh, so you ping pong ahead. Guess that wasn't it either. <laughs> Rusa, you ping pong. <laughs> Fuck. Um, maybe there was a second thing in that other lab as well that I might have missed. God, this is funny. Um, okay, there's definitely nothing else in here, but let's go back into this lab. That might have been a second option. This is just fucking bizarre. Oh. This might do it. Maybe. Is that something else I could have picked up? Okay, toilet roll. I don't know about the toilet roll, but who knows? Lady, you are school and dirt for losing. Shut up, and I won't help you anymore. <laughs> Lady, you are school and dirt for losing. Oh, yes. Let's see if this will do it. I mean, it has to at this point. It's I'm the ready last to be done one. With this. <laughs> Did we just get every single one wrong? Like, honestly. Furry clocks, lady. The head. 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 No snacks. Head is top of all up and down. At the top. The top head. Wait, does this thing actually mean head? Head is in a body's head? Where the hell am I gonna find that? Oh, it wants How us to go... Ah. It? it wants to go us to go somewhere. Okay, sector head office. Okay, all of those were wrong. Good. You're meant to get them all wrong. <laughs> okay, let's... Let's continue to get some more lovely dialogue out of this guy. Um, sector head office, please. Sealed fire break. Okay, let's get an actual head. look around for something. Uh, I think it's going to be this way. Oh. Defeat the Hiss enemy. Ranger Sartan. Sergeant Putin. Oh! A helmet. 
so it's current head. it's currently not wearing Is that the helmet what the prisoner meant okay. I guess there's only one way to find out so it's currently not wearing its helmet interesting okay and that's why it's so like agitated um okay back to the AWE to give this poor extraterrestrial being its head back. Absolutely bizarre. The head river chicken station. <laughs> oh, far tastier. A press any button. So the helmet is what you're after, huh? Tubes, snug and grape, pure grapes. Hello, lady. You're welcome, I guess. <laughs> Did Kirkland lock you up in here? Chief Trouble? Yes. Teddy's not around. Trouble. But holdouts and happiest. Can gather for goldfishes. No wrinkle. Okay. Well, sounds like you're doing fine in there now. Just make sure you don't go anywhere. Jelly. At least we helped this guy. I think. <laughs> Best we leave it locked up, though. But... I have no idea what it is, and we don't need any more problems out here. This is probably my favorite, one of my favorite things in this game so far is <laughs> just the way that it so confidently says absolute fucking nonsense, I think, is just the best part for me. It's just like, <laughs> oh, fuck. Um, I need a light bulb to cleanse some darkness, dude. Um, oops, I have the grenade launcher on. <laughs> Anyone got a light? I need to take it upstairs. Um, these light things aren't easy to come by, are they? Because the one that was here broke. Oh, it does come back. Cool. You're coming with me. I got some darkness to clear. I think that might be related to Artie's job. Oh, balls. How dare you. Alright, throw it up there and then come back for it. <laughs> Except it's probably not going to stay there, is it? Damn it. Yeah, we'll do it later. Not too fast about the lack of 100%ing um, Artie's missions. Because I think they're just you really just get like bonus rewards out of them, so that's okay. We'll head back to active investigations. So I believe we'll be heading into the Bright Falls AWE now, which is a Cauldron Lake replica. Cauldron Lake Lodge replica, which is very exciting. Director, ma'am, great timing. Hartman just came through here. God, he was hideous. He tore the security door into the Bray Falls AWE site wide open. He was so ugly. Like, wow, I got a good look at him. And Christ, he does not look like he used to. The hiss must have messed him up or something. He, he, he looks like a, a bar rag that's been twisted by the world's strongest man. Or a monster from some 80s horror movie. You know, back when it was all practical effects? Ugh, nasty. Real Did you say something? Winston. Remember, I can't hear you. <laughs> Never mind, just go after Hartman. Oh, so disgusting. Thank you, sir. Okay. Uh, missions. Yeah, eliminating the darkness in the investigation sector. I think that was those two. Okay, find Hartman in the Bright Falls AWE area. Let's go. So he tore it open. I've written, rewritten. The darkness wants to hide the past and make me lose my way. I trust what I read on these pages. I'm wondering if we're going to get another. I wonder if we're going to get another call uh, or another cutscene like the one that we just witnessed with uh, with Alan Wake. It's very interesting. I've written and rewritten, deconstructed, reconstructed, experimented with different voices, changed the style, changed myself, forgotten the language, relearned the language. Have I 
been here before. Gone down this path before. The darkness wants to hide the past to make me lose my way. You must know where you've been to know where you're going. I trust what I read on these pages. I wrote them for a reason. My notes to myself. The only way to make progress, recap, then write more. The style then, lose the fat, make it clear, ugly, functional, present, be blunt, only the brutal truth, cut through the reality, tear it apart, rewrite it, be clever, make them do the work, form the image in their minds, they make it, you just imply, incept, they're drawn to the mystery, obsessed, you set it up, they put it together, their interpretation, and there's only one because you give them no choice. And they believe in it because it's theirs now. Thanks, Alan. Very cool. I wrote them for a reason. Cut them for reality. Tear it apart. Ooh. So we'd, we can just like turn the camera and just like make it like. <laughs> All right, then. Bright Falls AWE. And then we come into contact with Alan Wake. We shake hands. And then it says, to be continued in Alan Wake 2, The Awakening. Stuck. Let's go take care of it. Naturally. Okay, time to melt some darkness away. Alan Wake really just writing things to uh, make the make the game longer. <laughs> He's like, and then the darkness halted the elevator, just so Jesse could get attacked by two hiss monsters. Except that hiss monster kept avoiding her, and playing ring around the elevator. This frustrated Jesse, and made her more determined to reach the end of her goal to take out Hartman once and for all. The thing that was Hartman. Fucking die, thank you. Jesse restarted the lift. Everything was right again in the world. Lovely. Lovely. Thank you for meeting with us again, Dr. Arman. It's my pleasure. Interesting. Thank you for meeting with us again, Dr. Arman. It's my pleasure, gentlemen. I hope the information I provided thus far has been of some small use. It's been invaluable, Doctor. Really, we have a much clearer picture of this event, thanks to your accounts. Well, I do consider myself a keen observer of... We did have one question, though. You mentioned in an earlier conversation that your patients displayed and I'm paraphrasing here, unnatural abilities that you in fact encouraged during their time in your lodge. It'd be very helpful if you could fill us in on the details there. Of course. Like yourselves, I work to understand and even bend the rules of our earthly paradigm. My patient's well-being was paramount, of course, but I would hardly be a man of science if I did not reach out at the underlying truth. As I stated in my written proposal, I believe working alongside your organization could be greatly beneficial to both parties. Sharing notes, as they say. Thank you, Doctor. That's all we need to hear. Remy? Dr. Emil Hartman, you have been found in breach of codes 4, 8, and 74 of the Federal Bureau of Control Criminal Offense System. What? You can't do this? I am a well-connected man. You're making a dire mistake, my friend. You will be detained until further notice and all personal property will be confiscated, including the Cauldron Lake Lodge. That's preposterous. You can't just seize my property. I'm a United States citizen. I have rights. That lodge is my life's work. I'm offering you years of research. Get him out of here. You're making a mistake. You have to listen to me. You have to listen. Sir, gentlemen. I hope the information I provided thus far has been of some small use. It's been invaluable. Really, we have a much clearer picture of this event, thanks to your accounts. Well, 
I to consider myself a keen observer. Interesting, you gotta travel through the motel to get here. So we're gonna get another cutscene. Hell yeah, dude. I forgot again. I had a plan. I know it. I've forgotten. deeper he says god just he's like uh what the fuck <laughs> whatever is going on with wake he clearly needs some help interesting These doors don't sound too good. Posters on the wall are the same. Turn the projector around. The story needed many beginnings, many springs, streams that turned into a river, a flood, and then an ocean. This was one. Wake used the materials he had, the connections he had, the people, the places. Wake put them in to make it true. His wife, the psychiatrist, his city. These connections, like magnets, move things. Alice was a conduit. She'd been in the dark place. The thing that had been Hartman sensed her near, sensed Wake through her, went berserk, broke loose. Wake made sure Alice was already gone by then. Safe. The more springs, the more the story became real, the more people believed. Cause and effect. It was extremely delicate and hard work. It had to go through the path of least resistance where success was most likely, where there was a connection already. Wake felt the pressure grow in his head going mad. Wake had to escape. Right. His. Escape. He was already out. He wanted to make it true. Wake needed a hero. A hero needed a crisis. For the part in the story about the government agency, Wake needed something special. Something to convey an alien force mimicking human intelligence. Something that can't be translated. Translated. Wake channeled Burroughs and Bowie. He cut up sentences and words. Orange peel. You are home. Insane. He put them in a shoebox. He pulled out the words. Wake created a Dada's poem. 
I try anything once. Or had he tried this before? Wake needed a hero. And then doing riding the things in the shoebox. His escape. Wake needed a hero. A hero needed a crisis. For the part in the story about the government agency, Wake needed something special, something to convey an alien force mimicking human intelligence. Okay. Okay. Another replica. Like the one they made for Ordinary. Send a ranger to my location. The Hiss are in for it now. I uh, pressed a switch, but nothing happened. Cannot fucking see. Alice Wake interview. There he is. Let's read the Alice Wake interview. Oops. After reaching out to the Bureau, Alice Wake was brought into the oldest house for an interview on blank 2017, seven years after the events of Alan Wake. See file blank for the full transcript. The interview conducted by Agents Shah and Dempsey revealed that Mrs. Wake has had recurring nightly visitations from her missing ex-husband in her New York apartment. Address blank. Mr. Wake appears out of nowhere and rushes at her down the corridor. According to her impression, he appears crazy and horrifying, clearly coming at her with violent intent. Mrs. Wake believes that he is haunted Haunting her, insisting he is not Alan, but a fucking monster in his body. So is that Mr. Scratch that she's referring to? That we still don't really know much about. I don't really know much about. Um, potentially. Mrs. Wake has not been sleeping out of the fear of these visits. Her attempts to keep the lights on through the night result in the relevant hallway's light bulb breaking every night, possibly indicating involvement of the blank. Further investigation required, we propose installing monitoring equipment in the apartment. Copies of supply request form L-501-4 have been sent to Mr. Kirkland and administration for approval. Okay, Ranger. Are you ready? These are the notes of Dr. Emil Hartman. God, why are there multimedia in here as well in a boss room? Dr. Emil Hartman, okay. I am continuing my work alone again since certain parties were too blind to recognize a golden opportunity. Despite my generous offers, the conversations came to naught. Some people simply do not value collaboration as I do. Though I believe now that it was for the best. The sort of bold pioneering work that I am undertaking cannot thrive under the shackles of bureaucracy and regulation. I have a history of seeking such partnerships. There was a time when I had hoped Alan Wake and I could collaborate. Together we could have produced art such that the world has never seen. But Wake was stubborn, egotistical. Writers usually are. Disappointing nonetheless. But now, like Tom before him, Wake has disappeared into Cauldron Lake. And this is where my work turns hypothetical. Since he was lost to the lake, Thomas Zane has been observed by various townspeople. This indicates to me that the individuals within the lake are not entirely gone. I anticipate Wake will similarly return one day. While I may harbor some resentment for the man, his raw talent and determination are undeniable. From this, I have concluded that the lake and the dark place within it are not as removed from this world as I previously thought. Given my acute awareness of what awaits within, my meticulous preparations and my considerable education I believe myself much more prepared than either Tom or Wake. I should be able to cross into that dark realm with the chance to return as they have. All that remains is the dive itself. It frightens me, I admit, 
But such is the burden of the truth seeker. I will take my plunge into the dark tomorrow with only the light of knowledge to guide me. It is time for a breakthrough. Until I return. What Dr. Hartman didn't expect is that breakthrough being his ribs breaking out through his back. There's a bunch of research in here. My generous offers, the conversations came to naught. Uh, I need to take that power core, but I don't know where to take it yet, so let me just... For the best, the sort of old pioneering work that I am undertaking cannot abide under the... Power core, power core, power slot, power slot. Okay, let's go over there. Throw that one over there that up. Oh, we got Bright Falls files from the 1970s as well. Cool. Oh, we can finally fucking fight him. Nice. You are pretty bluff on the eyes. Whoa, excuse me. So this is the Bright Falls AWE, but I thought it was a recreation of the Oh, there oh. It's this. We're on the outside of it. I was like, I thought we were going to be on like a recreation or something. He's not really challenging when you can actually fight him, eh? He just kind of lets you kill him. Oh, uh, I spoke too soon. <laughs> uh, I spoke too soon. Um, hold on. Mistakes have been made. I, I was like, haha, he's dead. Nope. Hidden second phase. Oh, I need to recharge my energy. Where the fuck is he? Do I just have to turn the power on again? Oh, you've unplugged some of my shit. unplugged my shit and thought you were being clever. Alright. Okay. He's gotta be dead at this point. He's got like... Okay, he's just got a shield now. As a second health bar. I mean, outside of like a second health bar, it is like pretty, pretty easy. He's just gonna keep doing this now, though. Okay. But now I know what he's actually done. I didn't notice that he'd. Uh... I didn't notice that he'd taken the power cables out. Let's do this. This deployed ranger, look at him go. So proud of you, bud. You got it. Can I take this guy over? Yeah, I want another one. Give me another one. This guy's level 10. He's a strong boy. Game, stop playing with me and allow me to pick up... Allow me to pick up the power core and not a random box. I swear to God. His shield has come back fully? Really? Why won't that... <laughs> Go back in there. Get back in your box. Engage him! Dude, what? Please.
Nice. Hartman won't be a problem anymore, Langston. But Investigations needs someone to run it. Interested? I've seen what happens to Sector Heads, ma'am. No thank you. Ma'am, I'm getting something on my terminal here, an AWE alert from Bright Falls, Washington. But it might be a glitch. The date's all wrong a couple of years in the future. And we're in lockdown, there shouldn't be any incoming signals. Maybe it was active before we went into lockdown? Are there agents on site? Let me check. Agent Estevez is the field agent in charge of monitoring the site, so she should be there to let us know if the situation has been through any major changes recently. A couple of years in the future, dude. This was the Alan Wake 2 announcement. <laughs> Before the Alan Wake 2 announcement. Things set in motion. If the alarm's true, then so is the reason for the alarm. The effect must follow the cause. It's happening again. A return. Yeah, dude, holy shit, that's so cool. You have been warned. <laughs> Fuck yeah, man. Why is there... Why are you here? Get out. <laughs> why are there still enemies in here? What the fuck? Why am I facing off against enemies <laughs> after a boss fight? What the fuck is this? Get out of, get out of here. What are you doing? I wanted to be able to talk about what's going on, and I can't because I'm being attacked by some random dudes. Okay, let me just clear up this room first, I guess, and then... We'll, and then we'll talk. This is so bizarre. I don't know why they decided to spawn enemies right after killing Hartman, but we'll roll with it. Oh my god, so many of them too, like... Bruh, please. Okay, it's not just a few people, it's a full-on fight for some reason. Like right at the end, I don't I don't get why. <laughs> why so fucking many of them too? Like we have thoughts and feelings to communicate about a the sequel to Alan Wake, which is actually very interesting that they went and full on like announced it um, at the ending of a DLC. Uh, I just think that's super cool. See you. Ugh. Okay, are we done, please? Good. Okay, now we can talk about it. Um, let's run off some thoughts and feelings uh, right off the bat is, unfortunately, I'm very disappointed with the Bright Falls AWE room. It's just a storage room with only like a mimicked outside of the lodge. I was really kind of, uh, I guess I was excited because I was expecting to be walking through like a recreated interior from the game, like actually walking through the lodge. So I'm a bit disappointed that it's, it's just like this. Um, unfortunately that's just like the weakest point for me is like the Bright Falls AWE. It's almost like there's a build up like a hype uh, surrounding being able to go in there because you have to go in two other AWEs first before you're able to go into here and you get in here and you're like, oh, I can't, like, what's it going to look like? It's a recreation of the lodge and it's a warehouse. 
it's just a normal warehouse looking room and you can just see it on the outside well, that's kind of that kind of sucks um so that's my first thought um outside of that love that there's literally just like oh there's an awe alert in cauldron lake except it's a couple of years in the future so good literally just being like the return is nigh for for alan wake and that's really cool and then they were finally ready this must be where they studied hartman uh finally ready to release the um, the the trailer uh so we do have a couple of notes to read uh that we picked up which is some bright falls 1976 in uh information an unconfirmed uh, unconfirmed threshold manifestation occurred at cauldron lake wa the citizens of bright falls had gathered in the town's southwestern fields for the annual festival known as deer fest eyewitnesses all claimed that the day had been sunny confirmed by reviews of the area's weather reports but then with no warning a thunderstorm appeared in the direction of the anderson farm and a tornado rose from cauldron lake the torrential rain that followed caused a flash flood so i think this was the this was the aw we caused by the Andersons at Anderson Farm. <laughs> uh, it was as if the day had turned to night. Testimony from blank. Frank Breaker, the sheriff of Bright Falls, formerly a bureau agent, see employee file blank, managed to guide the crowd to safety as the festival grounds were destroyed by the flood. The festival was cancelled, ending one day early. Lack of official bureau presence on the scene makes this event difficult to report as a confirmed AWE, though the similarity to other known events in the Bright Falls area lend credence to the accounts of the townspeople. And a supplement. On the day of the flooding, the rock band Old Gods of Asgard was rehearsing in a field outside the Anderson Farm, the homestead of band members Odin and Tor Anderson, both admitted to being in a heavy state of inebriation at the time, having spent days drinking their homebrewed moonshine while celebrating Deerfest. After the townspeople were evacuated from the flooded field, Sheriff Breaker was asked by Freya Anderson, daughter of Tor Anderson. I love that the name is also Freya. I, lo- I wish it was spelt with like the J as well. Uh, Freya Anderson daughter of Tor Anderson to check on her father and uncle Breaker sorry and uncle Breaker drove to the Anderson farm and found the band members alive but in need of medical aid Tor Anderson had been struck by lightning and Odin Anderson had cut out his own right eye a possible reference to North deities Odin and Thor I don't know why they would bother like blacking that out we know what that is redacted names of the Norse gods Odin and Thor. They claimed they had fought and valiantly defeated a dark army of the Scratching Hag rising from Cauldron Lake related to the suspected blank at Diver's Isle. While impossible to verify, these events are relevant to the recurring AWE at Bright Falls and the Cauldron Lake blank. Odin and Thor Anderson have been listed as persons of interest. Wonderful. So that brings the control playthrough uh, to a close, there are some, there's a couple of bonus leftover things to really get into, to check out. So we might check this jukebox out finally. Um, we'll give the jukebox a look. We may as well include it right at the end. We do have some notes over here. Wake evidence and wake photograph okay just a couple more hidden in the darkness over here let's actually quickly take a look at those uh research and records wake evidence a photograph of alan wake captured by alice wake during an event in her home alice wake former wife of alan wake has recently been visited at night by her ex-husband or an entity resembling him see file blank for more being a professional photographer mrs wake positioned cameras with motion sensors around the corridor he appears in and managed to capture an image of mr wake on film during an interview with mrs wake she mentioned that her favorite camera a blank model was lost in 2010 during awe 35. no match has been found among the confiscated evidence from that awe it has been filed as a potential altered item and research staff stationed at Bright Falls being contracted, sorry, contacted to check if they have any knowledge of such an item. Oh, Jesus fucking Christ. And that's the photograph as well. That's actually, like, horrifying. Could you imagine, like, trying to, like, take a fucking image of, like, your missing, maybe dead, trapped in limbo husband that is haunting your fucking hallway and that is what you see when you take a photo? That's awful. Like, that's actually terrifying. <laughs> no, thank you. I, uh, I take, I take no part in that. Thank you. Night Springs screenplay page four. Damn. Huh. 
Oh. 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 Uh, go back up. <laughs> that means we've missed a page three somewhere. God damn it. That's unfortunate. There's a continuation of the director and uh, scientist storyline. I'm spoiling myself by reading a uh, by reading a page ahead. Oh man, hold on. This is as fast as you can scroll when you accidentally click away from it. Just gotta go all the way down. Um, the scientist turns from what used to be his director, now transformed into a stranger, an alien that only resembles the director in form. He drops his all-important clipboard as he stumbles toward the closing portal, but the horrible entity is already rushing through it in a flow of insanity and chaos. The scientist becomes caught in it, and the entity devours him, screaming as it enters our world. The director lifts his pistol to his head. His hand is steady, sure in its finality. Or so I thought. Camera fades to black, a gunshot is heard. And so our hunger for control, our obsession for domination and power, the hubris at play in this children's puppet show we're starring in can only lead to our fall from control to submit to those who really hold the strings and control us in Night Springs. The whole scientist and director uh, dynamic makes me think of uh, Trench and Darling. When I'm like when I'm thinking about it, and I, I could possibly be wrong here, and there's probably other information that might lend to this or take away from it. But when Alan does his whole uh, thing about when he was talking about he needs a hero, you know, makes me think like he's talking about um, he's talking about ah. The cans that you can shoot. Oh, I was looking at those. Damn it, I didn't think I'd actually be able to wipe out the board. But look, there's pictures. Um, there's the town. Um, fuck, I totally lost, lost my train of thought getting distracted there. Um, well, yeah, it was like riding a hero. And a, a hero needs a crisis. And then talking about, like, the alien life form or whatever. So it made, like, did... Alan then didn't end up writing all of this, wrote Jesse as the as the character, wrote all the mumbo jumbo, and also wrote the hiss as the alien life force that comes in to give her a crisis. And then is Jesse going to save? <laughs> is Jesse going to end up saving uh, Alan Wake? Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? Uh, let's unlock more levitation duration. Let's max that one out. Um, and in terms of the jukebox, uh, the jukebox is located, let's just do this. The jukebox is located in a whole different section. I think it's in... Right at the very top. It's in Central Executive. We can do it from here. I'm interested to see what the jukebox is all about. I'm super, super excited for Alan Wake 2 now, especially with like all of this build up. It's gonna be crazy. Uh, use the token in the jukebox. It's in one of these rooms, isn't it? That's why. End of an era. That's what they're saying. I heard something about him falling into a different dimension. That sounds like a perfect way for a man of science to get over. Um. It's in a room, right? But which room? I forgot where the jukebox is located. I remember walking into the room with it. You heard the director stop the hiss, right? Sounds like she can really handle things. Finally, someone had the ball. Oh, this is... I'll be here waiting for you when you wake up, brother. Oh, he's got hair now. If you wake up. Oh, okay. Dylan's just do be chilling in this cell. There you go. Huh. Okay, so that's when. When do you think Marshall's coming back? It's not no. like her to be absent during a crisis. Never. Marshall's as tough as Luke wants a full physical you don't need examination to worry about her. of Dylan Faden. I Faden. hope you're right. Specifically looking for any physiological. <laughs> So I remember that, I remember that the uh, jukebox is located inside a cell, but I am forgetting 
where it is, because the it's o literally only in Central Exec. Held, this is Lynn Salvador, head of Bureau Security. I'm making a formal security order. Do you there it is. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, tier one, tier two, tier three. Oh, you get expedition gear. Uh, undertake expeditions in quarry site beta to earn unique mods. Completing each of the four objectives will dismantle the formation to reveal the rewards waiting inside. We have 39 tokens. <laughs> Um, availability expires in an hour. Player and weapon damage plus 100%. And then it plays us some jukebox tunes. So for in investigate and clear the four island sites. So essentially it's just like a thing where it's like you're on a time limit doing a timed ex expedition, you gotta do some cool shit and you can get some rewards. Interesting. Player and enemy weapon damage plus 100. Alright, excavated bones in here. Alright. Retrieve the lost specimen data. And eliminate the waves of hiss. Okay. Weaker because obviously this is uh, this was unlocked at an earlier part in the game, so they're kind of easy to deal with, which is not bad. Especially when we're just looking to check it out and see what it's all about. Especially when you've got a grenade launcher that's just able to completely and entirely fuck everyone up. So I'm a fan of that. to the formation and then you go to the next few aisles rinse and repeat so it's just like a cool it is just a cool little expedition into uh, black rock quarry next one and then there's that one over there and that one there okay. this is so fucking gorgeous like this would be so confronting like you just like walk out through uh, the quarry site and you're just like oh right um yeah just casually another dimension yeah love to see it that's fine not at all terrifying 
doesn't make me feel insignificant in any uh, in any capacity. Recover the biometric logs from the dead rangers. Oh, you gotta make a thing out of it? Okay. Almost got it. I got it. Oh my- Oh! I can't move! I literally got, was just getting stunlocked by the three of them. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Like, I literally cannot fucking move. There you go. <laughs> Love this. They're all de dead. These. They're all de dead. These. Things killed them all. There are so many. You're listening. Get out! No! Stay the fuck away! Jesus. Things kill them all. There are so many. Gotcha. If only, if only that soldier had what I had. Not, they're not all the same, which is good. You don't have to like survive waves each and every time. I cannot see a thing, but we're rolling with it. <laughs> I literally cannot see. But yeah, I'm glad that it's not just like a go here, survive waves, rinse and repeat. So there's different objectives in each one, and I guess if you complete tier by tier, you'll get yourself some uh, fancy pants rewards at the end of it. So that's cool. I guess it's stripping away this thing in the middle. The formation, if you will. I was like, we can just dash across here. I don't need a, <laughs> I don't need bridges to come down. What is this in here? Burn the his corrupted metal. Oh, oh, it's a furnace scenario. Okay. Slowly moving because I don't have energy. Oh, yeah. We got a spear nearby. <laughs> Never mind, I'm dead. <laughs> Alright, so it seems that this is like more of the same, run to an island, kill some dudes, do the formation. So let's skip to the good part. So the last one is plate cleansing and what's really interesting about this one to me that I actually think is like really cool is like it makes me think, it makes me think of like, um, I can't, I can't move, I'm just stuck. Hold on. It makes me think of like capture the flag uh, or like, you know, con like capturing control points. Um, and I just think that that's like, it makes me think that this is like control multiplayer could work and it would actually be quite fun. Like imagine just having like multiplayer, like death matches uh, of just like 
people that are like have director like powers. Like you've got to run around and do all of the like skills available to you. And you could do stuff like capturing the like capturing zones and stuff like this, which is like exactly what I thought of as soon as I saw that. I was like doing like domination or like different modes, like cleansing the altered item, like capture the altered item instead of capture the flag, like fuck, like actually would play control multiplayer if it if it existed. It seems like not necessarily it's not like a groundbreaking idea, but I just think the the gameplay of control would probably be like quite a unique experience for something multiplayer. Um, unfortunately those tend to not be the most successful type of multiplayer games because sometimes it's it's hard sometimes it's a bit obscure and it might not uh, might not you know stay popular or it'll be like well loved for like a decent amount of time but then it will just completely fall off the radar it's like it's unfortunate when when the Stuff like that happens with uh, with multiplayer titles. That's like outside of like the norm or what you'd uh, what you'd expect, I guess. But um, yeah, just like coming into this fourth and final objective and seeing that, I'm just like, I would I would play I would play control multiplayer if it uh, if it existed. Is there a control point up here? Keep going up. Uh, I don't think so. All right, where's this last? Oh, there it is. Last point. Over here. Thank you. Oh god. Please no. Turn to the formation. So formation is should now be completely stripped away. Someone's shooting me from all the way up there. No, someone's shooting me from down here. Good night. Okay, let's head back. See what our reward is. The stripped away formation in the middle. Oh, it's one of these distorted tourists. I hate this boss type, or this enemy type, I should say. I don't like the invisible winged demon thing. <laughs> Especially when it just like spawns in and just vomits darkness. Or corruption at me. I just am like, get out, get out of, get out of here. Stop, stop vomiting your crap at me. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to see it. Get out of here. Goodbye. Take your reward from inside the formation. Oh, so it's like one of these. Oh, <laughs> that's like a cool little completion screen. So you get, uh, I got a tier four, three, and five mod. Box expedition completed. Okay, that's neat. Uh, we've got one more thing. We've got one more thing to look at. Um, and this was brought to my attention. Uh, this was brought to my attention by a uh, by this a member in my uh, in my Discord. The timing. Uh, so this was brought to my attention by a member in our Discord um, who pointed out that there is a missable uh, location. Uh, in the first DLC, the foundation, so this is something we actually missed uh, from DLC number one, uh, that we're just going to tack on to the end uh, so we can actually see what that's all about. So we'll do that as well. Uh, we'll read the Songmaster jukebox. Item is to be kept in a secure location in the executive sector. The room must be sealed before usage to prevent unintentional transportation of staff. A classic 1950s jukebox made by Songmaster Entertainment Limited. The jukebox was found with a single record inside titled A Song for the Others by Blank. When this record is played in the object, anyone within earshot is translocated for as long as the album is playing. Those involved in the object's first known incident report being transported to a tropical beach. 
when this object is used in the oldest house, it only transports users to an area located in the recently manifested quarry threshold. Researchers theorize that this site's unique spatial density results in all transitioning material gravitating to its position, as has now been observed with other bureau equipment. The oldest house's unique nature could also be having an effect on the object itself. The object is not bound to any known individual. Attempts by bureau staff to bind it have resulted in blank and should not be attempted again. Okay, there you go. Uh, so, if we go and have a look at the fast travel map for the Foundation uh, DLC location, we'll go all the way down, there is a question mark location. There's also another question mark location in the Panopticon as well, which we have not yet gone to either. So, actually, while we're here, let's go to that one also, and then we'll go to the other question mark. So, we've just got a couple of loose ends that I don't think would really encompass a full episode. So we'll include it at the end of our final control episode to really give like a nice little, nice little bow um, on the control playthrough uh, as a whole. Now, I think you have to get to this section. All this paranatural power contained in one place is a risk. Makes me wonder what other dangers are locked away inside the bureau. All right, I think you have to levitate your way up to this point. I'm not sure which one it is, but it might be all the way at the top. So let's float our way up there and see what we get. We'll just check check the floors as we as we get to them and see which one it is. Um, a lovely swan. How do I get up further than this? Because I think the lift only goes up to a certain height as well. Can I go higher than this? Oh, can't really reach it. Hmm. Oh, hang on. Hidden location discovered. With the destroyed... Okay... Type? I used to know where fiction ends and reality begins. Here, they're all the same. It's a hideous trap my every thought made real. Look how you can tell that this is like older footage as well that was made, I guess, around the type of the game because Alan Wake's got a different hairstyle. <laughs> He's got different hair. It's filmed differently. So I think the name of the guy that does like the like the face or uh, like the, that portrays Alan Wake in live action is Sam Lake, right? So Sam Lake's had to dress up as Alan Wake at multiple different points looking different each time depending on when the scenes are filmed typewritten page altered item a standard letter sized typewritten page with minor water damage the page is full of text but apart from the top seven lines all the rest have been violently scratched out only a few individual words and phrases can be made out the page emits a dim glow in the dark when the text is read there is a feeling of dislocation as if witnessing the page being written as you read it and as if reality around you was being worded uh, sorry, why did I say worded? I'm just reading blank as worded now. It was being blank to match the words on the page. Just got word in my brain. This feeling is made stronger if the text is worded. It's blank. <laughs> Forensic and linguistic analysis confirms that the text has been written by Alan Wake with the same typewriter as the earlier materials discovered in Bright Falls in 2010. Cool. So this is, this is in the base game, but this is like a hidden location which uh, has, it has Alan Wake related altered items of fucking coffee thermos. <laughs> Have we got a research note for this one? No? No research note or, or document for the thermos, but it's there. I see it. I see it. So this is the Alan Wake room. Typewritten page, coffee thermos. Wonder what's hidden behind there. And I wonder what's hidden behind there. Interesting. Um, I don't, 
don't know if we can get higher than this. I just think those floors might be... Uh, because I don't think the lift goes... goes higher. P6 cell. Um, yep, that's up there. I wish I could tell which floor exactly the question marks were on. Because it's like it's in here. Oh, hang on. It's a fortified unit, but it's... But it's closed. It's red. I don't know how we can get in it. Hmm. This one is also red. This one is also red. Oh, hang on. Archives? Is it archives? It is. Okay, this is the one. Archives on floor two. Okay, first, I was like, oh, we have to go all the way up to the top to fucking level eight. But I'm like, I don't think we can get higher than that. Okay, so we haven't been in here before, the archives. So we'll check this out and then we'll check out the other question mark area related to the foundation DLC. Great. Spicy meatballs. Love it when there's an astral meatball involved in anything. Open up. Okay, we have clearance for these. Looking around for anything that stands out, I guess. I guess maybe this might be the film projector at the end. Yes! Multimedia for altered items. Nice, we got another another darling presentation. <laughs> Introduction to Paranatural The exact process of how an altered item is born eludes us. We find them in the aftermath of altered world events. They take the form of everyday objects, ever present in our lives, constantly evoked in the thoughts of millions of people, now infused with unpredictable energies. They're altered. The superstitious would call them cursed. Now, are altered items sentient? Not quite. They're often fixated, programmed almost to cause certain events to happen over and over again. While generally less potent than objects of power, they are not able to be controlled. Left unchecked, they, they can be highly dangerous. To study altered items, we contain them in Panopticon. <laughs> Just standing there looking proud. Okay. rush through these rooms and see if we have any documents brought to our attention. Oh, that's good. Okay, you're free now. Oh. Um, thank you. I don't need enemies. I just want to. I just want to peacefully explore a location. Is that so hard? You know, for for archives, I thought that we, there would be more files. Ha! <laughs> like mm, maybe we got a we got a, a photo. 
I really need to look for like more of those. Except they only really give us more materials and not like documents, so it's not like we're missing out on much. Hmm. still not much. What are we getting out of the archives outside of like a multimedia presentation? Like that was kind of, that's kind of it. Maybe there's something else on the bottom floor. Hold on. If we go in here, this takes us somewhere. It takes us to a shelter. And we also have a lower level. At the moment it's just like upgrade materials. I think the the probably the oh god. Oh, it's a trap. Jesus. I think probably the main appeal of going back to the Panopticon was to discover the Alan Wake related items, which was actually really cool. But just funny to see the like the hotline style recording of Alan Wake there, but just with uh, an earlier haircut. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of fucking dudes in here. I'm just gonna blow them all up with a grenade launcher. Get the fuck out. Ugh. Okay. Thank you, everybody, for your time today. Okay. Good. So it looks like it was uh, the archives was primarily one multimedia. Uh, darling presentation and a bunch of upgrade materials so now I'll head back now we'll head back to the DLC area and we can see what's in store for us there okay so we're back in foundation where there's our little question mark area which is up here. So we need to make some form a path. Ooh, so we might need to... Don't break on me. Okay. Go through here. Chasm. Head into the chasm. So I believe there's something in here for us to interact with. VHS tape supplement, a locked door, and something that does not look trustworthy. Uh, VHS tape supplement. This item's creation is the source of much research and debate. It was a product of the Bureau's first attempts to film blank, Entity A-001, during Operation Shallow Tide. An agent was able to conceal themselves in an area frequented by Artie, at which point they began filming. The agent reported that the video camera showed no signs of disturbance during the filming. Later, when reviewing the footage, the research staff became mesmerized by its altered effect. Measures were taken and altered evaluation began. Never before have Bureau personnel been so closely involved in the creation of an altered item. The experiment was quickly replicated, though not with the same results. The footage was simply useless in every subsequent attempt. This event spawned a great debate as to whether altered items are created by paranatural entities, intentionally or otherwise. Similar experiments were prohibited soon after. See the Ash Act for details, as the creation of altered materials was deemed an action the Bureau should not engage in. An agent was able to conceal themselves and film Artie. Specifically, they're trying to do surveillance on Artie. Okay, what is this? What is this? Okay. What are we what are we doing here? I've plugged a power in a power thing. Uh, we got a random box. 
close the door. Uh, door that cannot be opened. Oh, I almost was like, whoa! It disappeared. Mm. I, I was almost thinking that, like, it was going to get transported to another dimension or something. But no. <laughs> okay. It's like a platform nine and three quarter scenario. You just got to fucking run through it with enough speed. What? It, what is that? What do we have to do? Uh. In comparison, what is this power? What is... Oh, there's a fucking crystal door right here. <laughs> there we go. New mission, found footage. Ooh, found footage. Use the altered item to escape the chasm. Here's me forgetting that these crystal walls uh, can be destroyed. Use the altered item to escape I can't see a thing the chasm maybe I should have thought this level 15 what the fuck that's like the strongest thing we've gone up against yet what the fuck Jesus Light. another TV <laughs> it's footage of Artie what the fuck the light from the TV Artie my guardian angel in the uh, through television. I love it. You can see the projection of him. That's fucking weird. It's so dark. How am I supposed to drag this thing out of here? Ooh, hang on. Do you like that? Ooh. Hang on. Hang on. The television stuns them. Okay, so you're not actually supposed to, I guess maybe you're not supposed to actually fight them because of them being like level 15, they're actually so strong, but you stun them with the television. This is fine, Jesse. You're okay. Just don't drop the TV. Huh. So is the TV, yeah, is the TV, the VHS tape in the TV is the altered item, right? this TV in the box, maybe? We'll put this, ooh, this is creepy. We'll put the, the television uh, in that box and seal it away, maybe. I don't want a rock. I don't want a rock. crazy is this because this is like completely optional like <laughs> like, I, like I missed it so I'm glad that it was uh, after everything was said and done it was more of a hey you can go back here now that think now that you've uh, completed the DLC I did notice the whole like question mark thing and I was like oh that's curious but it would probably be just a couple of upgrade materials and yet here you go a whole fucking altered item uh, expedition oh god Ugh. Whole altered item expedition uh, with Artie on a tiddlewing. <laughs> like what? Just exploring the chasm with me and my best pal, my best janitor bud. Oh my 
rushed out of here, I guess. There's the way out. Up there. There it is. I could like feel it. I was like, this feels like a room goes down. Yeah. Back at the cell. Ah, it's Thank the God. container for it. <laughs> okay. And that is the mission complete for found footage. So we've completed all the missions in the foundation now. Wonderful. We've got some ability points out of that. So that is the last little tidbit for us to check out. So that brings our control playthrough to a close. Finally and properly this time. <laughs> so thank you so, so much for watching uh, Control through the main game, Foundation, and the AWE uh, DLC. This has been an absolute joy uh, and a pleasure to to play this game. I've uh, I've I've had a great time. It's been it's been really good. Um, I'm very happy with this game, and I'm so grateful that I also got to have the chance to go and play Alan Wake. And it's funny because um, there was when Quantum Break came out. When Quantum Break came out. Um, cause I've, I've said this like at a few points now, I, I tried it for a little while. Um, this was before game pass was a thing. Like I had the game on disc and it came with a downloadable code for Alan Wake. It came for the, the Xbox 360 original version of, of Alan Wake. And I redeemed it. I had it installed and it was just, it's been sitting on my Xbox for years, like since 2014, it's been sitting on my Xbox for years <laughs> and I just never played it. Never sat there. I was like, oh, it's in my backlog, you know. Uh, we'll play Alan Wake one day, I guess. And it's just funny for us to eventually be in, you know, 2021 when we started Control. And now here, 2022, we're finishing it of, you know, re like Remedy Entertainment. It took me long enough to finally get through to playing Control, then going in to play Alan Wake, and then playing the, the DLCs. And I'm so very excited for Alan Wake 2 that's going to be that's going to be an awesome experience to share on the channel when it does come out so uh definitely looking forward to that so thank you so much for joining me uh through the control playthrough loved the gameplay loved the story love all the weird stuff and it's definitely pushed me to look at even weirder stuff and it's been great uh i'd recommend uh checking out the mandela catalog um video um maple county Mandela catalog video that I did on the channel uh, recently, uh, which definitely has like similar vibes, like this like analog horror sort of stuff, and it was, it was very cool. So I can't wait to check out more stuff uh, like that as well. Uh, thank you so much for watching, and as always, um, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much to my patrons who voted for me to play Control as well, because you started quite the journey of Control and Alan Wake together. So thank you so much to all of my Big Boss tier patrons who voted for this playthrough as well. Uh, it's been it's been a pleasure. So I'll see you in the next videos, guys. Thank you so much for joining.